At around 3.20 p.m. on the 22nd of August, 1999, a tragic incident occurred at Paramount's Great America in Santa Clara, California, resulting in the horrific death of a 12-year-old boy. The incident occurred on the Drop Zone Stunt Tower, an extreme thrill ride and one of the park's most popular rides at the time. The Drop Zone ride at Paramount's Great America Amusement Park is what is referred to as an extreme thrill ride that was manufactured by Intamin AG, a Swiss-based company known for such thrilling and terrifying rides. It opened in 1996 and was considered one of the park's most popular attractions, with an estimated 1.9 million riders each year. The Drop Zone ride is designed to give passengers a heart-pumping experience as they are lifted 207 feet in the air before being dropped straight down to the ground, along a metal track at speeds upwards of 60 miles per hour. It is comprised of a towering structure adorned with stripes and encircled by six vertical tracks, each track carrying four people. The top of the tower is 224 feet above the ground, and the ride takes passengers on a 129-foot freefall before a magnetic braking system slows them down at around 78 feet. Before the ride begins, passengers are strapped into a car that holds four people, using a padded bar that is operated by a hydraulic locking mechanism. The bar, which is the only system holding the passengers in for safety, comes down over the shoulders and secures the upper torso of each passenger. However, the rider's lower body remains unrestrained, with their feet hanging freely. That day, tragedy struck at Paramount's Great America Amusement Park in Santa Clara. Joshua Smurfat, a 12-year-old boy from Sunnyvale, was waiting in line for one of his favorite rides. Joshua was a special needs child who went to the park regularly and was a huge fan of the rides. In fact, he was given a pass that allowed him to skip the long lines. What was somewhat of a routine outing for Joshua would soon become a horrifying memory for his family and friends. According to witnesses, while riding the drop zone stunt tower, Joshua slipped out of his car while it was 50 to 100 feet above the ground, and he hit the concrete below, dying instantly upon impact. Witnesses who were waiting in the same line for the ride reported seeing Joshua struggling to stay in his car before he flew out feet first. Joshua then flipped cartwheel style over the bar, falling straight down on his head onto the pavement. They also saw the bar fly up after the ride started breaking to stop. Jared Winslow of Ben Lomond was one of the witnesses. He said that he and his sister ran over to Joshua, but it was unfortunately clear that he was already dead. Joshua's mother was watching the entire incident from a distance. Witnesses report that she was hysterical, yelling, why didn't they put the bar down? How could this happen? The Santa Clara Police Department and the Fire Department responded to the incident and remained on site until late Sunday evening. The vicinity surrounding the ride was closed off with yellow tape. The mishap transpired at approximately 3.20 p.m. during a day that park officials classified as moderately busy at the Paramount-owned amusement park. A family friend who was on the ride with Joshua said that he did not remember the boy's safety harness being checked by workers before the ride began. He also said that the accident seemed to occur when the ride's magnetic braking system engaged more than halfway down the tower. He heard a sound like a big ka-chunk, like the sound made when the harness snaps open or closed when you get on or off the ride. The operations team at Great America maintained that the harness was checked and locked before the ride started, and it was still locked when the vehicle returned to the ground. Timothy Chanaud, a spokesman for the park, said, We simply don't know what happened. Representatives of the amusement park asserted that drop zone operators said the harness was snapped shut both at the beginning and the end of the ride. One manager said that he found it hard to believe that the safety harness could pop open, regardless of what people may have thought they saw. The ride maintenance manager for the park said that the harness is electronically operated and can be lifted only after the ride has stopped at the bottom. When the vehicle is in motion, there is no way to unlock it, he said. Paramount ran rides similar to Drop Zone at its parks in Ohio, North Carolina, and Canada, and all three were shut down awaiting the results of the investigation. The park's minimum requirement for riders is a minimum height of 54 inches, which the boy met. During the investigation of the Drop Zone, the rest of the Paramount Park stayed open, but the phone was constantly ringing with many people calling in concerned about their safety if they were to come to the park. Some workers and customers at Great America said that the sadness of Joshua's death seemed to cast a feeling of overwhelming sadness over the normally fun thrill park, 
which flew its flags at half-staff in Joshua's memory. Some children reportedly were nervous while there during the investigation, and were double-checking their seats on the rides. The horror of Joshua's death and the accident had looming effects on the park goers. Joshua had severe mental and physical handicaps, but none of his disabilities would have disqualified him as a rider of the drop zone. He was strapped into the coach near a man identified as his stepfather and a family friend, who also happened to be a park employee. Joshua's tragic death at the park led to an outpouring of grief and concern, with many people questioning the safety of amusement park rides. The tragic death of 12-year-old Joshua Smurfat at Paramount's Great America Amusement Park in Santa Clara, California, on August 22, 1999, had a profound impact on his family, friends, and the community at large. Joshua's mother, Tammy Smurfat, told KTVU that she was still struggling to come to terms with the horror of witnessing her son's death. She recounted how she saw Joshua fly off the ride and fall to the ground, right in front of her eyes. I wanted to run in and catch him, and I couldn't, she said, and I saw him fall to the ground, to his death. After the tragedy, Joshua's family and friends left a large bouquet of daisies and irises at the entrance of the park, with a blue ribbon wrapped around it, reading, Josh, you are so beautiful to me. We miss you, honey. Joshua was remembered as a lovable child who played in a special little league team for disabled children, according to a family friend. The death of Joshua prompted Paramount's Great America to add seatbelts to the drop zone ride, the same ride on which Joshua had fallen to his death. People say that Joshua's accident was similar to what happened to 14-year-old Tyre Sampson in Orlando in 2022, and they have been advocating for additional seatbelts on all amusement park rides since his death. They also want all ride operators to be over 18 and undergo regular drug and alcohol testing to prevent accidents from happening. Joshua's family filed a lawsuit against Paramount's Great America, but they eventually lost. The theme park claimed that there were no errors in the operations of the ride. The amusement park later emphasized that no one had died on the ride before. Four other children who had ridden in the same drop zone car as Joshua sued the park, alleging that the park's negligence caused great emotional distress. The aftermath of Joshua's death exposed the importance of safety regulations and measures in amusement parks. While accidents can still occur, it is essential to implement measures that can reduce the likelihood of injuries and fatalities. Joshua's family's advocacy for additional seatbelts and stricter operator regulations is a necessary step in improving safety standards in amusement parks. Joshua Smurfat's death was a tragedy that left a lasting impact on his family, friends and the community. His family's advocacy for safety in amusement parks serves as a reminder that safety must always be a top priority in any entertainment venue.